the stronger the bonds. So repeat after me. The larger the charge on the ions, the stronger the bonds. Now, uh, for so this is why MgO has a higher melting point than NaCl. Yeah, MgO has a higher melting point than NaCl because NaCl is basically Na plus and Cl negative. One, the, they both have a charge of one, but MgO is uh, Mg2 plus NO2 negative. They have a higher charge, so the ionic bond is stronger in the case of MgO. Yeah, so this is all about ionic compounds. Now, after ionic bonding, we move on to covalent bonding now. So, so covalent bonding. So now you know that you've looked at non-metals and you have realized that non-metals need to gain electrons to attain stability, right? Because they want to complete their octate. Octate means they want to have their full electronic configuration. So when two non-metals react, now both need to gain electrons to attain stability because when it was a metal and a non-metal, the metal wanted to lose electrons, the non-metal wanted to gain electrons. So it's like, I don't want a chocolate, but you want a chocolate, so we are, we are both happy because I can give my chocolate to you. But in the case of two non-metals, which means you have another friend who wants the chocolate and even you want a chocolate. So, and, but there is only one, there is only one chocolate, both of you want it. So what you'll do is you'll share it. So that's what non-metals do. They share electrons to attain stability. Now, let's, so let's say, uh, so when they're sharing electrons, now these electrons that are shared between them, they are between both the atoms. The, the shared electrons are between both the atoms. Because when we do the dot and cross diagrams, let's take a look at, let, let's take a look at chlorine, okay? So chlorine has seven electrons in total, yeah? Chlorine has seven electrons. So let's take cross for one chlorine atom and dot for another chlorine atom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we have another chlorine atom. One, two, three, oh, sorry. Three, four, five, six. Okay, I, sorry, I was about to make the dots. I, I was supposed to make the dots for the chlorine. So I quickly go back to that. Uh, there was, because remember one chlorine had the crosses, one chlorine had the dots. So, So we've made seven electrons for both chlorine atoms. Now what they'll do is both want a total of eight electrons. So actually what will happen is we represent the structure like this chlorine, chlorine and then they have shared. So this chlorine has shared one electron, this chlorine has shared one electron. So now let's look at the overall structure. Yeah, so you can see that uh, you can see that both have shared electrons. So when I calculate the total number of electrons for each atom, the total number of outer electrons for each atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Then for this atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now both are happy by sharing these electrons. So basically, a covalent bond is the force of attraction between the nuclei because you know that there, is, there will be a nucleus in each of the atoms and the bonded pair of electrons. This is called the bonded pair of electrons. So the force of attraction between the nucleus and the shared pair or the bonded pair of electrons is the same thing, shared pair or bonded pair, you can say whatever. 
shared pair of bond the, the force of attraction between the nucleus and the shared pair of electrons is called a covalent bond now that's what a covalent covalent bond is so 